Crossroads Media. Hey, what's going on, everyone? The Sixers continue to play hot basketball. Before we talk about it, if you're new to the channel, make sure you smash the subscribe button. Hit the thumbs up button as well. I love you all so much. We have a great time here breaking down Philadelphia sports. Over on Twitter, at Broads81. That is my personal account if you want to hit the follow button there also. And lastly, if you're looking to go to the NBA games, the NHL games, NFL games, you can utilize the promo code Broads at SeatGeek's checkout page for $20 off of your purchase. That's basically eliminating your fees right from the jump. It is a no-brainer. Make sure you get yourself to a game soon. And with that being said, enjoy the show. What is going on, everyone? Welcome on into Sports Talk with Broads. Here we are. The 76ers win their fifth straight, and it really isn't about beating the Detroit Pistons. We're all understanding that they are not a very good basketball team, and they stink, but it's just the fact that you handle this type of adversity the way that you had to start the season. I wouldn't have thought that it would have played out this way. While there are still learning curves, and there's things to get better at, and you'll have to be sharper, Joel Embiid needs to be better offensively. Matisse Thibel needs to be offensively. Can you rely fully on a 21-year-old Tyrese Maxey and a younger guard in Shake Milton as well to carry you along the way after Seth Curry does his damage? I don't know. Maybe the answer is yes. Honestly, maybe they continue to take strides throughout the 82-game season and they become stronger and stronger and stronger and smarter and smarter and smarter. Maybe that is the case, but ultimately, I'm just more proud right now that we are witnessing a squad that is fighting and earning every inch, and when you're down fur con on top of Tobias Harris, on top of Danny Green, on top of Ben Simmons, no matter if you're playing an average team, a below average team, or the worst team in the NBA, it's difficult to continue to pounce the way that you are, and look, you're away from the Wells Fargo Center. I wanted to see how this team would react after they face an Atlanta Hawks team at at the Wells Fargo Center in South Philadelphia. That's very emotional. There were emotional tilts that just went down. Damian Lillard, whether it should or should not have been as emotional as it was, you can't lie, witnessing that game, knowing the storylines and the drama of wanting Damian Lillard, there was something to be said about that effort, whether Joel Embiid's rest day was methodical to put out other players to say, hey, this is what we have. We will showcase you some of our players. Teams do do that around the league a thousand percent. What's it like heading to Detroit, low energy spot, not a lot of hype involved, one of those regular season games where it's easy to naturally just slip and not bring your A game. They completed the job. Now, the first two quarters, I thought they allowed way too many points. They allowed 32 in the first quarter, 34 in the second quarter. But in the third and the fourth, they were significantly stronger on the defensive end. 16 points allowed in the third quarter. 16 points allowed in the fourth quarter. So, basically, 32 points in the entire second half. It was solid, for sure. Uh, I, I need to see Joel. I, like I see him working hard, and I and I mentioned this before. The team definitely creates their identity based off of the big man. I did think at times, though, he was upset trying to draw the foul, and when a double team happened, he did not get the call trying to pass out of the double team, and it would be a turnover or something along those lines. He would stop in his tracks and somewhat bitch and complain at the referee. He wanted a different call, obviously. He wanted to go to the charity stripe. So there were moments throughout this where you could physically see him be frustrated, whether he was setting the screen and his knee was banging with somebody else. There were a few times he was flying all over the court. He's diving underneath the basket. Well, it wasn't technically underneath the basket. It was to the left, but it was behind the baseline there, and he gets up, and he's checking his elbow. He's rubbing his elbow. He's always flying all across the floor. I thought in this game, though, you could see him animated. You could see that he was getting upset. We already heard about the Wilson ball, the fact that the NBA changed the ball. My problem with that is, and clearly everybody's different, has 
that stopped Seth Curry from being a dog? Has that stopped Seth Curry from making massive buckets? My guy just continues to add to his repertoire and do it at such a fantastic pace. It's amazing. He finished with 23 points. He knocked down four threes. The three guys that I truly admire throughout this effort was clearly Tyrese Maxey, Shake Milton, and Seth Curry. So Maxey, 8 of 12 from the floor. 25 and 4 was his stat line. 20. Five and four, not 25, just to be clear here. And with the assists, I thought he saw the court very well. There's two areas that I am clearly zoning in on every time he's out there the way that he is, and it's what is he like with the offense, setting up the offense, finding his teammates behind the back, a oh, little how do you do? How is he going to operate from that perspective? And oh, by the way, defensively, which he's fighting. That fourth quarter sequence where they scored six straight points and it was smooth as hell and bang, bang, bang. Joel Embiid with a tough shot. Tyrese Maxey creates his own spot. Turnover continues to fly towards the rim. Did a little belly flop as well. And Matisse Thibel got in the action too with a major dunk. So that 6 nothing spurt of excitement, that six-minute jolt of let's go, fellas, it was huge. And I think that was one of those moments that really snagged the victory. You felt right there. Yup, yup, just close this out and, and run through it. Close it out, do your job, and from here you're golden. That somewhat stole whatever was left of Detroit, which wasn't much, obviously, because they were struggling in that second half. What, the what, one ugly play from the Sixers' eyes, it was a good play for the Pistons, was when, who was it? Oh, Isaiah Stewart had the crossover on Joel Embiid at the top of the perimeter and ends up taking it to the rack for a major slam. And then Allah on the broadcast is knocking the bench the Pistons bench for celebrating the way that they did. And then a handful of moments later goes, oh, I didn't even realize the crossover. I thought he just had the dunk. And I thought the bench was overreacted. How did you not witness the crossover? The crossover, he had the ball in his hands. If you're not watching the guy with the ball in his hands, what the hell are you watching? Now keep in mind, they're not on the road. They're broadcasting from the Wells Fargo Center watching on TV screen. So I understand it's not in your natural habitat as a color analyst, but you can't be raining on the parade. You cross up Joel and beat. Imagine if, let's put it in perspective here, right? If you are Furkan Korkmaz, let's say Furkan Korkmaz crosses over Jokic. You don't think you're going to be going nuts and showing a, a, a clip of the bench where a few guys are holding everybody back? Or if, let's say, I don't know, Joel Embiid or somebody was on the bench at that time and Joel is reacting in this crazy way where he's jumping up and down and he's fist pumping? Of course. Isaiah Joe just crossed over one of the best centers in the entire league. Reaction was warranted. They're not going to be winning much this season. You're seeing all sorts of graphics with where they rank in the league. 30th, 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 30th. Well, you get a crossover from Isaiah Stewart, and that's that's part of your praise. That's part of your excitement for the entire 82-game season. Let's get to Shake Milton, 7 of 13. He had 16, 8, and 5. I love watching Shake and Tyrese. And I think there's a reason why. The last primary ball handler would not be willing to do fundamental stuff would not be willing to just be a legitimate point guard and play the position like it's supposed to play. Utilizing the screen. Now, look, I do think they're going to have to start adding to what they're doing offensively with Seth Curry, add another layer, add another tier compared to just some of the cuts that they're running. They're going to have to get creative. But for right now, due to the circumstances, it's not easy to come out flying this way. You know how simple it is and how normally, I, I would say, if you're going to play a percentage game, most teams, based off of the drama and the toxic environment heading into the season, would probably fall in more of an underwhelming category than this. I don't value regular season basketball as much as most. I've made that very clear since we began Sports Talk with Broads four years ago. With that said, I know hiccups happen. I know bad losses happen. I know great teams, NBA title teams, that fall against the worst 
squad in the entire association on a random Tuesday night, Thursday night, Wednesday night in October, November, December. The fact that they did not slip is actually very impressive to me knowing that there's 7,000 excuses already built in. Now, eventually they're going to lose and that will happen. That scenario I just laid out will be an automatic. It's not right now though. And you know what's different that I feel about this team? It seems like the way they have confidence in themselves, knowing they're missing $30 million in the salary cap department because someone doesn't feel like competing and being an actual athlete and looking at himself in the damn mirror because he's selfish and he doesn't care about his teammates whatsoever because he thinks that they throw him under the bus. I find this hysterical, right? Somebody reached out to me the other day about, oh, I can't believe, Joel. Do you think no one wants to come to Philadelphia because they're fully aware of Ben Simmons being called out and they don't want to be called out by a teammate? I mean, are we are we serious? Is that for real? That's embarrassing. I'm listening to all of these players talk about the game after all of these games. Why is it not being labeled as calling out your teammate? I'm hearing Doc Rivers talk about these players. And right now they're positive. But I've heard him call out Maxi. I've heard him call out Tobias. I've heard Joel Embiid do the same thing. Doc and Toby. Just talk about the game as it played out. Because that's your job when people ask you questions about what happened. That is what you're allowed to do. Talk about certain sequences in the game that were impactful to the outcome. It's been happening nonstop, all of it, to this point of the season. They're talking about sequences throughout the game. Why does nobody have an issue with it now? Because it doesn't partake one individual? Anyway, getting back to what I'm, what I'm enjoying out of this team, it's like Milton, Maxie, it's refreshing to see an offense operate due to floor spacing. I'm listening to Mark Jackson on the postgame show. It's like, you know what's so awesome about this team? The spacing. You hear it, and someone else talk about it. Barkin, the spacing. You hear the coach talk about it, the spacing. Yeah, it's different when the Yang's hanging out there and he can make his shots. Minivan. He finished with 14 and 7. Paul Reed's on the ground. It looks like the play's over. He doesn't give up. He passes the ball. He gets the ball back and makes it for two. Not that he had an insane amount of playing time, but I just love the fact that once again, for a third straight game, and probably even more if I date it back, I can honestly target players on the roster, six, seven guys, where I could point out a specific moment in the action that puts a light bulb in my brain. That was important. That was important. Might not might not be as massive. That Paul Reed play, the one play, is clearly not as massive as Seth Curry's. But my point is, when you could run down the list of the box score afterwards and point at a specific name, majority of those names, there's something that you could talk about in a positive light that you can relate to a winning formula more times than the negatives. Are there some negatives in there? Absolutely. No one's going to be perfect. The entire team's not going to be just flying on all cylinders and never making a mistake. You saw some funky lineups, though. And you figured that would happen when you were shorthanded. I miss Corky out there. Oh, look at this. It's a whole new Broads. I miss my guy, Furcon, pulling up in transition. When he's dribbling the ball and he does the fake pass and maybe he finishes taking it to the rack. It's a two-man game. He's coming around the screen and he's holding the ball up high, acting as if maybe he'll fake pass it or fake lob it, but he takes it. Two-man game with Furky Do. Missed him out there. Now, when's the next game? Saturday night in Chicago. Chicago wants revenge. Going to be difficult. The thing is, you never know each day who's going to be available for the next game, which puts us in a tough spot when analyzing. Who's going to be back? We have no idea. Who's going to be available? We have no idea. It hasn't made a difference to this point, but this is a back-to-back. So you're utilizing a lot of what you have left in the tank. And that's another factor into this game. Back-to-back, you can run out of juice real easily. They did it. They did not overlook their opponent. And that can't go unnoticed because when you're young, I know you're hungry. 
and you're just excited to be out there, so you leave maximum effort out on the floor. But it's also because when you're experienced, you know. I've lost to the Cavs on Tuesday night in November. I've lost to these teams before. I know what it's like. When you're young, you don't truly know. It's easy to overlook them and think they stink. Who do they have on their roster? They? This isn't Villanova anymore. Cunningham? Look at his three-point percentage tonight. Okay, Grant. Okay. They're slop. They're garbage. They're a bad brand of basketball. We'll wax their ass easily. That's when the veteran leadership, Doc Rivers, give Doc some credit right now. Give Doc a lot of credit. You could tell that he was visibly frustrated that day at the, at the Camden facility when Ben Simmons did not show his face. He was disgusted and he had some rage in him. And I'm sure that they got tired, no matter what Daryl Morey says, they get tired of all the questions. It starts with Daryl Morey, yes, but also Doc Rivers, because he's more with the team emotionally and physically in the locker room day in and day out with practice. He sets the tone with this. And he's done an excellent job to limit the damage and limit the noise to the point where we're talking about how excited we are with the way that they play. They're bought in right now, and they're fully together to prove everyone wrong. Ben's probably sick to his stomach. Let's be realistic. With the way that his brain works, he's rooting for this team to fail. And he's rooting for this team to fail miserably so it doesn't look as bad on him. Look, you need me. He's probably riding that bike every day thinking, this team needs me. It will show. I mean, I don't know how you don't analyze yourself every single damn summer and think, damn, what could I be and how much I could help my team if only I was willing. But I digress. That conversation's been here every single damn day. Uh, Let's get to the Anytime Hotline first. Football fans, who's ready to score some free bets? Now you can when you bet on any NFL game this week with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. New customers who bet just $1 on either team to score can win $100 in free bets. When a team scores, you score. DraftKings Sportsbook customers can also get skin in the game with new same-game parlays. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code BROADS. Bet $1 on either team to score and win $100 in free bets. If they score, you score with promo Promo code Broads this week at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Must be 21 or older, Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. In partnership with Meadows Racetrack and Casino. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem. Call 1-800-GAMBLER. All right. Let's, uh, let's run it on over to the Anytime Hotline. Here we go. I know. I know. It's still early. And it was the Pistons. I know. But this team continues to impress me these last few games. It seems that no matter who's in, who's out, everyone's just adhering to this next man up mentality and they're all filling their role and doing what needs to be done for the team to help them win. This is something that I haven't seen out of this team in years now. And I think it's a combination, again, of the gelling with having a the roster that's mainly returned from last season, minus a couple tweaks. And uh, I think that Ben Simmons' drama has brought them together. I'm just really liking the team vibe I'm seeing so far, and I would love to see it continue more. No doubt I'm on the same exact page as you, and I think it's very telling. When I'm where I'm at right now, Think about it. Bro, right? We analyze how many games. We analyze how many seasons now. We're on our fourth or fifth season. We've been doing this for a, for a little bit of time now. Since when do I ever analyze action against a team as poorly as the Detroit Pistons? And I don't harp on that as my number one conversation point of the game because there's a lot of the times where we take way too much out of playing one of the worst teams in the damn sport the regular season in the NBA the disparity is obnoxious there's just not a lot to it when you think of the dumpster fire so normally that's the first thing that I'm clearly laying out it's big as hell it's right there on the front page it's the opening lead of the story the Detroit Pistons are a joke and they suck that is still the truth Truth, but because of the circumstances, we cannot throw away the context. Tobias Harris unavailable. Danny Green banged up. Furkan Korkmaz right now not there for your team due to unfortunate circumstances. Ben Simmons does not want to play for you. That's a lot of guys missing. 
You could be the worst team in the league. This is very difficult to continue to hold up your end of the bargain. And maybe it catches up to them. Maybe it does. But as for right now, the fact that they started out the gate this quickly, this way, I think it's easy to fall apart early. It's a mindset. By now, look, games one, two, three, there's an adrenaline rush of the season beginning. I think you're at a decent point now, a a nice body of work in, where that adrenaline rush somewhat fades off, and now you're just getting back into the flow of the NBA season. You're getting back into the rhythm. It's still early, don't get me wrong, but there's a big difference. I remember taking the ice for games one and two the first weekend or so, the first two weekends we played Friday, Saturday, whenever we went to certain cities and certain schools, that's where we would play. And, like, the first weekend or two, oh, you have the nerves. You have the good nerves, though, right? You're excited. It's hockey season again. But then by that third weekend when it's games five and six, you're good. You're, you're just rocking. And then the, the systems come naturally because you've been practicing it all throughout training camp. And then you played some games and you just automatically get into your sets because you, you just ran it so much to that point where you just start becoming who you're supposed to be and who your identity is as a unit. That's starting to happen. And this seems to be a a common theme to this point. I've seen this more times than I haven't seen this. I have to collect that data and do something with it in my brain without taking it to the extreme and saying that there's no chance that they can fall apart at some point. And maybe after so many games shorthanded, the body fatigue starts coming in. And when the body fatigue starts happening, it's harder to focus on the details. And that's when you make mental mistakes because, you know, you're so beat up in the physical aspect, your mental side of the game isn't as sharp and crisp. Maybe that happens. But by then, I hope that Joel Embiid is more in rhythm for himself offensively because that is a problem. And from there, Tobias being back would be large. So more than just hold your own. I want them to do more than just hold your own. And I think they can, and they've been showing that to this point. What's up, bro? This is just beat the Detroit Pistons, 109-98. to It was a tough game. I mean, the first half was 66-63 going into break. I mean, Sixers were a little fatigued, and B was tired looking, but... I mean, the Sixers battle you with Seth Curry at 15 in the first quarter. I mean, Seth Curry's been absolutely amazing this year. He's been a gift. And Tyrese Maxey, uh, his 21st birthday, he played 44 minutes. That, that's incredible. 44 minutes, 8 of 12 shooting for for 20 points. So he was great. And Sixers uh, clamped down on defense in that second half. So great team win. Uh, they're now 7-2. And hopefully they can build all this going to Chicago with five wins straight. Imagine being that young and running around the court. And he's flying too, right, Tyrese Max? I think it's a fantastic move by you to point out the minutes played. My guy's just out there giving maximum effort, rolling around. I mean, this guy is just running around. He's a, he's a speed burst. He's just a bolt of lightning. He's nonstop. He's always – you can do that when your legs are so young. Danny Green can't hang like that anymore. Some of these older vets can't hang like that anymore. Here's Maxi with that new sense of life, and he's just rocking to the basket. Some really, really tough takes. Some difficult, difficult finishes around the glass right at the rim between him and Shake Milton, and they're a blast right now. Those two together are a legitimate blast. I think they're pushing one another because they know that there's a golden opportunity to help this basketball team, and they're both doing it from a respectful competition level where they're just both pushing each other. Like, I want it, I want it, I want it, I want it. They're both saying that to one another and they're both playing extremely hard. You can make the argument for Shake being in the lineup at times. You can make the argument for Maxi being in the starting lineup at times. What would be best for them? Regardless, I think you have two nice options here to grow with and it's fun. These two, it starts with them. It really does. It starts with them right now because they're supposed to be the ones that set up everybody the where, you know, the way they need to and where they have to go. And then they're doing it too. And they're confident in how they're playing. I thought you ended the call with a great phrase. It was a good team win. That's been the common denominator for this nice little start. Team win. It tells me the culture's right. It tells me the distraction isn't as bad as we possibly thought it could be. Everyone's head's in the right spot. There's things we got to improve on. And I am nervous for Joel right now. He just looks slow and he looks off. 
I always wondered because last year was so special. That's that's hard to consistently be. LeBron, that's an anomaly. People don't do that. Tom Brady, that's an anomaly. People don't do that consistently. There was a bit of me that wondered because everyone said like there's this two, three year window of what what he can be. It's hard to duplicate that level of success. I'm not saying he can't find himself and be better than what he is now. Obviously, yes. But what he did last year was rare. It's rare. He's the type of player that I could anticipate seeing it happen to again, but I can't rule out, you know, some, maybe there's a step, a step down. Carson Wentz, he was an MVP. We thought he was going to be an MVP caliber guy for five, six, seven, eight years. It's hard to be that. Now, Carson Wentz and Joel are not going to fall to the same level there for that following season or the season after that. I'm not, I don't want it to sound that way whatsoever. Is there a correlation with how awesome it was last year and how hard that is to do night in and night out and why we're seeing the start that we're seeing? Or is it as simple as their approach with the knee and the offseason was foolish? It wasn't properly prepared the right way. Now, I have a hard time thinking that. Joel Embiid, superstar of the 76ers, has a meniscus issue at the end of last year and they... They they figured, let's do nothing, and everyone was like, okay, don't worry about it. Let's just do nothing. It's okay. I don't know. I'm also not going to sit here and defend medical decisions of the Philadelphia 76ers, but, I mean, literally, I can't imagine anything else being a bigger, bigger fix this offseason than Joel Embiid. So you think that they just let it slide and figure there'd be no, the, the, not not discussion, but, yeah, maybe discussion on what's the best move. I'd imagine they did what they all thought was best. And they got a lot of opinions on it and a lot of information on it and came up with the the decision that they thought. Like, they didn't do this without real care and real effort and real determination to do what's best for Joel Embiid's body. That's all. Who knows, though? Like I said, I'm not going to die on the hill of the 76ers medical staff. Trust me. That's the last thing I'm dying on. Uh, Before I let you go... Let me tell you about my friends over at BetQL. Do you want to get an advantage over your sports book? You need to download BetQL, the only app you'll need to make smart bets. Their best bet computer model scans over 350,000 unique bets per year to give you the best bet recommendation for every game across all major sports. Their model covers everything, spreads over unders and player props. Their sharp data so you can see who the pros are backing the line movements. You can jump on betting opportunities in real time. Head to the App Store or Google Play Store now to download BetQL. Enter the Discount code BRODES at payment checkout for 25% off any of their subscription offerings. You can find this information down below in the description. I want to thank everybody so much for hanging out, and I will see you next time.